we got some goodies. This is our linkage. So this is a twist grip, and then it goes down to the uh, carb. This is all. This here. And then I'm pretty sure this is our clutches. Anything else in here? Nope. I'm gonna grab a knife. This is the primary clutch right here. These are the bolts. I think these bolt into the block on the motor. There we go. Assembly instructions. All right, so. Okay, I'm going to get to assembling this. Okay guys, so, uh, I got it mounted. Um... At first, I was doing it wrong, and I was like, oh no, did I order the wrong one? But, it's all good. I got it right. So, um, I'll just give you the gist of it. So, you do have to tap that in a little bit with a hammer. Just lightly tap that in for to clear. And then also, your dipstick. It's down in there. Um, you have to... Uh, shave it down a little bit because it doesn't clear and then once you do that everything will clear use these middle holes but yeah there's a way better instructional video online that I use um, that's all I'm gonna show you guys but you can go on there and check it out but now that we got all that installed oh wait I do have to put this cover on this cover is only four months, so, so I'll just do that in a sec I think I might leave it off right now but, yeah, I don't know. I'll throw it in. And so now we can start to see where this needs to be. And then we can weld that up. And then all our motor, all the, that's all good. And then we can start working on the arm back here. Because then we'll know where the chain's going to have to go. So, yeah, let's get to her. Okay guys, so I got it all kind of sitting in there. And so now this should be, it is off a bit, as you can see, and I, excuse me, I could move it um, back a little bit more that way, but I wanna make sure I have clearance for my chain to run back. And right now there's a good amount of clearance. And so now I can draw my lines of where I need to cut and not just sing out and then I'll be able to weld all that in they'll be great um but just out of fun we haven't heard this engine run I figure let's fire it up so that's what I'm gonna do right now and 
and uh, I'm gonna turn the choke on. And let's, it's on the on position. Oh, probably a good idea to put your gasket back on. too long because uh the garage doors are closed but yeah runs good um it shakes a lot so i have i have these little rubber um i don't know what do you call them but these are basically motor mounts uh well i don't know if you want to call them that a washer that you put in between there and it absorbs the vibration because it's rubber. And I just didn't put those in right now because I'm just mocking everything up. And I, it's, I'll put these on when I'm done. You know what I mean? So, yeah. But I got plenty of space. There's actually, it comes with enough to put two in. I may do that because we got plenty of clearance to lift it up. But, um, yeah, uh, that was just, you know, but so good. It runs. Now I think I'll mark everything and uh, we'll be good. All right, so uh, it's been a couple days. I've had driver's training, so I haven't been able to work on anything. But we have a snow day because everything is covered in ice. So that's great. And uh, this is what I'm using for that back of Um. Yeah, oh, there's some dirt in it, but so I need to figure out how long it's got to be to go back, and then it's gonna have to go in and then go back straight, uh, to be able to fit because it's gonna kind of have to go like let me roll this over here. So Obviously, it's going to be more forward. It's going to be up underneath there. But it's got to go out straight. Go in. So I got to measure how much of all that. And then go out. And then have a plate welded on there that our hub bolts to. And then that will bolt to the wheel. So, uh, I'm going to get back to you guys once I have a plan. Because I got to do a lot of measuring and stuff. So... I'm gonna get to her. Okay guys, so as you've seen, I got everything sitting up on blocks and all that. This part is gonna take a while. It's a lot of measuring. I gotta really make sure everything is gonna line up right. But, so this is about what my uh, my bar's gonna have to look like. Um, so I gotta get uh, the rest of it finished cut out so I know, so I can then measure this and see what angle I'm gonna need and all that. The motor's a bit crooked right now, so my slots in the motor plate, I'm going to have to notch out a little bit more, but I don't, I might do that right now. It's not real important right now. Uh, I really just need to get my back arm designed. So, I drew it up a little bit on paper, um, but those are just rough numbers. I, I think I'll take measurements from this cardboard 3D thing I'm making, because then I think it'll be 
more accurate is what I'm is what I'm hoping. So Yep, that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. And so yeah, let's get back to her. I think I'll pick back up uh the camera once I have the cardboard thing completely made and we're all good on that. So I'm gonna get back to her. Okay. So I got it all made up. Um so now we gotta start to measure and cut and just remake this thing out of metal. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Um so yeah, I'm gonna get to her. Okay guys, so I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. So I got all these pieces, right? This is the angle I need. So I cut it right there. Then I took this piece, set it on my metal, got it perfect, and then traced it. And now I'm just gonna keep doing that. There is a bit of radius here. I just just, just imagine that as being straight though. And then straight, then straight. So that's what I'm doing. And then I just angle it until it matches up and now I'm gonna cut it and I'm just gonna keep going. So I'll tell you guys once I have all these pieces done. Okay guys, so, um, I don't know tacked. It's just kind of chilling. I don't know why those have that, but whatever. So it looks good. Um, if I, the table's a mess right now. If I take and set all these pieces on here, They all match up. So, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get back with you guys. I, I'm gonna have to cut this down a little bit or something, and I gotta notch this out. So, I'm gonna get back to it. And the reason I'm not time lapsing is because I want to listen to my music and I can't play music and have a time lapse at the same time. But, yeah. Okay, so I got everything hooked up here. It's actually very simple to set up. So, this, I think this is like, I'm not exactly sure how a plasma cutter works. But it seems like the ground on the welder. And it just plugs in right there and then it twists to lock it in. And then this just plugs in, screws in. Then you hook up your air and plug that into the wall. Then your air goes to that filter and then that goes over there. So very simple to set up. Um, but yeah. So I've never used it before. But yeah, I'm gonna get back to her. I'll come back to you guys once I have this cut out. Okay guys, so I've been using it a little bit and it is so touchy. Like you move a little bit and it just, it shows all your little wiggles. Anyways, I've been just kind of working way my way closer to the line. It's the outside line that I need to cut. And this thing is awesome. I've just been cutting out little chunks so far. And then, so yeah, that's what I'm up to. Outside, it's looking like just absolutely nasty. It looks really cool, but it's all ice. The trees are so heavy right now. Well, that's Michigan for you. It is pretty smoky in here, but so I got the door open, trying to air it out a little bit. That's the plasma cutter over there, but obviously we don't have to cut. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep shaving away until I get it. Okay guys, so, um, got it all welded up. Looking good, looking good. Um, yeah. So 
so that's done. Uh, it's really rainy. It, it's just, there's so much ice on everything. Can't even see the ground. Like, can't break through it. Trees are just all droopy. Yeah, it's just been raining all day. The main camper's looking good. I haven't done a update video on that. Basically, what happened was, in the summer, I, I was just trying to get done so much, and filming it took so long. So I just quit filming it, which I should have filmed it, but whatever. I'll do an update video on that. That one, that's done, but yeah. Um, and for you, those of you who don't know, I built that uh, last summer. It's pretty cool. But yeah, so our arm is looking good. I notched it up here uh, to go through that quarter inch steel a little bit, so um, that this part up here sits a bit flatter, so I can get more. Like, there's not such a big gap, so I can get some good welds in there. Um, to really, uh, secure it, but, yeah, so I can't, I was just using this chain at roughly, like, where my chain was gonna sit, so I knew if it was gonna clear, um, yeah, like, like this, somewhat. So, yep, I'm gonna close the door now, I just open it if I'm welding or grinding or something like that, try to keep, uh, get the air good, you know. Um, this right here, all this stuff, after I use that plasma cutter, all that metal is on the ground. It's like such thick dust. But yeah. So I'm going to get back to her. Actually, what I need to start doing now is prepping to weld the arm on there. So yeah, I got some work to do. This is nerve wracking because if it doesn't work or if it doesn't like... uh. If it ends up not working, I gotta take it all off. So, this is the nerve wracking part, but I think I got it. I've made it this far. So, yeah. Gonna get back to her. Okay, guys, we got a rolling chassis, and we don't even need a kickstand. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it does stick over a bit, uh, but I don't... I guess we'll see if it rides funky, but I don't... It shouldn't. Got that all welded up. I did need a bit of a spacer. Oh, one blue door open. Um, and I got all that welded up. It is looking good. And I don't even need a kickstand on there right now. Um, I did have to take this uh, brace out of there because the motor plate hit it. I'll reinstall it once I know exactly where my motor's going. Um, but yeah, it is looking good. I do want to get the motor mounted in this video, but so all I need to do is weld it in is all. Just weld that in. But um, the welder ran out of cord or uh flex cord uh i don't think we have any more this is both solid but we i might i can go check the welding cart see but that is looking sweet we got clearance on all sides so that's good and oh my gosh this thing is just ridiculous a truck tire on the back oh i'm tripping over the fan and a dirt bike tire in the front. It looks sweet. I mean, I'm very happy with how it's turning out. It looks just awesome. And this back arm, I really think I did really good on that. I really like it. There, it is close there, but like quarter inch, that that's enough. I think, cause you gotta think, there's no suspension, so it's not gonna be moving or anything. It's just solid. So if, as long as it's not moving, it shouldn't, it shouldn't hit. And it is not the strongest right now. You can see it wiggling. I need to add braces. Um, come down from here, going down to there. I think I could use, I could use this stuff, or I could use what I have left of this. Um, but I need a good surface to weld to up here. And like right now, this isn't enough to weld to. I'm 
So I might have to cut a chunk of steel out of that quarter inch over there and weld that on here so it gives me sur more surface to weld to. And then, uh, cause I'll have more surface to weld to if I have a long piece here. And then I weld my piece onto there that goes down or whatever. But that would also have to have a bend in it because I don't, yeah, I want, it would have to have a bend in it to get over to the thing. But, um, so, oh, it just fell. All right. Well, it's strong. Just took that fell, fall. Okay, don't want to fall again. There, seems fine now. So the wheel turned and it fell because I caught my uh, jacket caught on this handlebars. But yeah, it looks sweet. Um, anyways, so my CV axle, where'd I set that? Right here. I stuck my hand right in the grease. All right, anyways. Sprocket right here. So we're gonna have a flange that welds onto here, right? And we're cutting all this out on the crossfire. And that will have bolt holes. And then my sprocket will bolt to that. As far as a brake, we're gonna do the same thing. Have a flange that welds onto here. And that has, it's, it's just a small brake uh, disc. And then my caliper will mount somehow in there. I think I can, me bolt it to that hub or not the hub, the hub plate right there. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm gonna be able to do something like that. Um, But yeah, so I'm now I'm getting to the point where I can start thinking about a paint scheme. I'm thinking all black with, so all black with this, here let me so do So just that. think all black and then that have that chrome wheel and then this uh, stuff, as the seat cover. I mean, I think that would look good. That goes good with black. So I think it'll, it'll look cool. And let me know down in the comments. I need a name for this build. Because it is just ridiculous. And, but, yeah. So, you've probably seen, I think I already said, I'm just using this uh, to make sure everything clears. And it should. You notice I was holding it really wide. That's because I'm going to have to have a really wide uh, sprocket. It's going to be a real big sprocket. Because it's, 80 tooth. Oh, wait. Is that going to clear this? I didn't even think about that before. Eh, well, we can always just notch this out if it doesn't. Because thinking about it, if I was holding it like out here, it would it would, it would would hit. Yeah, so that that's going to hit. We're going to have to notch that out, which is not a big deal. It should be, we would just have to, if we stuck some plates in there and we re-weld that in there, it should be, it wouldn't be quite strong, but it should, still should be strong. So, yeah, we're, yeah, now I'm thinking about that. We are going to have to notch it out, but no big deal. Um, and then, yeah, so because this is so wide, it, when it comes down to here, it still is clearing and we may have to have a tensioner, like a, a guide or something down here. So it's not like, you know, flopping around, but you know, that's not a big deal. We can handle that. And so up here, not much clearance, right? But it's. It's a, it's a cruiser, you know? I'm not gonna be going over a bunch of whoops or anything like that, cause it's just a, a cruiser. So I'm not too worried about that. And if it does end up being an issue, what I can do is I can chop this off and weld a, like redo it, have a bend in it. Just, or just weld a bar that goes like this and then cut that off. And that, that'll work, that'll solve the issue. Well, a lot more clearance. Because they're sharp right now, so they are going to catch on stuff. But um, we'll see how much it catches on. Um, and if it is an issue, we can adjust it because we have lots of room in here in the engine bay. Oh, it's really coming down now. Some birds over there. All right, you guys. But I think I'm done for the night because unless I can find some welding stuff. Or, uh, flux wire, unless I can find some of that. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Or tonight, I don't know. Okay, guys, so it's been uh, a day or two. Um, we went out and took the spacer off the 85 because we're not even going to be using those axles, so we don't need the spacer. Um, so we just got slid on there right now. So it looks like two inch spacer. That should be good, I'm hoping. Um, but we'll see how much it pushes up there. 
So, yeah, we're going to throw it around there real quick and get back with you guys once it's done. Okay, so, um, we just got it welded up, uh, looks good, and so we just welded these on there, and, um, then we weld the bar onto there, uh, pretty simple, easy, and, uh, that's the same bar we used for this, but, yeah, so we got that done now, how's it feel? Good. Alright, so, now we can mount our motor in there, but what we're gonna do now, so, we got the spacer off. I'm pretty sure I told you guys about the spacer. And it slides on there, all that's good. We got these um, lug nuts, but our socket that fixed those lug nuts is a 22 millimeter, and it, anyways, it won't fit into that spacer, so what we're gonna have to do, and it's just barely, I mean, 16 and 5 and S. So, we're gonna grind this down and then it will slide in. Okay, guys, so we're out here. We got a rolling chassis. It is awesome, but when we try to turn it, it's awkward because the tire is so wide and you have to lean when you're on a bike. It is one of the weirdest things I've ever rode, I think. Yeah. So, Justin's gonna get it rolling here. Oh, I'm out of breath from pushing it. So turning it, it's like very nerve wracking because the feel of the back tire. But it all looks good. It looks sweet. That huge back tire. But yeah, we're getting pretty close. Our chain just got here. Now we're waiting on a sprocket because then we can, our CV axle is going to be right here. Then that's where our sprocket will be too. It doesn't even need a kickstand, man. It just holds itself up. Looks great. All right, so now Justin's going to roll down the hill and try not to run into the road. I mean, we only got front brakes right now, and they're from the 80s, and, and they're weak, but... I mean, it's just Justin. We won't miss him that much. Just turn it in the yard. <laughs> oh, I want to see. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, um, we're adding another brace. So. Everything's just tacked in there right now. We got some buttoning up to do here. We need to cut this off, add a chunk in there, and weld all that up. Um, and then we're gonna have a piece that goes from there to there, and that should be real strong. So yeah, we're just gonna finish up on that and then call it a day and pull it behind the four wheeler because that's fun. So yeah, let's get to it. Yeah, yeah, so I was gonna throw it on the time lapse, but then I just totally forgot, and we just got going, and so yeah. Um, so we stuck a, we cut out chunk of steel, just cut out a chunk of steel, and then I welded it in there. And then Justin cut this brace here and this one here, and I got them all welded in, and it's looking fabulous. It is way stronger because before, when you grab this and wiggle it back and forth, it would um, yeah, like I. It moves the whole bike now, and uh, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but, um, and then when we were rolling around too, oh, that was our strength test right there. Um, when we were rolling the bike around too, 
it was wobbling, I could see, as you went down the hill. We're going to test now, see if it doesn't when we roll down the hill now. So, yeah. Okay, guys, so we're out here in the field, pulling around, behind the Kodiak. Let me tell you what, it's like nothing <laughs> you have ever rode before. I mean, but, so at first it's really scary because it's hard to turn. But all you gotta do is put your body weight into it and it turns. It turns like a three wheeler. Yeah. You gotta like lean weight off. Yeah, and it is so, it, but it is so much fun once you're doing it. And it's like nothing else I've ever rode before. Yeah. And, but yeah, but it throws mud right at your head. You're yeah. gonna shot in the back of my head right now. <laughs> it's just oh all mud. But anyway, so here, what we did put these supports we're gonna have to notch them out for our chain but um first we gotta wait for our rear socket so we know where our chain is gonna go before we can notch that <clears throat> so this is the end of this video in part four we're gonna be mounting the motor putting the chain on it and hopefully be driving it we won't have rear brakes well hopefully the we need to order a brake caliper and we're gonna make our own brake disc on the plasma cutter the cnc plasma cutter but yeah, so thanks for watching and tune in next time. Done? Yeah. That back fender, the brace fell off and now she's rubbing. <laughs> Shit.